Welcome to Cleveland, America. That is all. Enjoy the show. Oh, it's, nice, it's nice to have some elbow room. Yeah, without right? that. With them giant tits in the way. Yeah, now you got just these giant tits in the way. It's all right. Well, uh, low, let's kick off the lowest rated show ever. <laughs> Why are we doing this? Because we were both about halfway to yeah, the bar before yeah, right, we decided yeah. just to go through with it. Yeah, I could have just split last week's episode into a two-parter. We'll find something to talk about. Like, we um, always do. Like, okay, so I may or may not have helped the man not commit suicide this week. Oh, yeah. Welcome to Cleveland, America. It's not a serious place, but it's starting out kind of serious. Let's th- let's hear about this. Uh, about the- what, and it's it's very... Cleveland centric because it happened at Edgewater Park. Like, you know, the roundabout when you get off of the shoreway. Yeah. So, like, I'm just getting a walk in to clear my head. So, it's like yeah. probably late morning, and like a dude pulls up in his, uh, I want to say it's like a Ford Escape, right? Got black guy. Who's like trying to escape this life? <laughs> and you, did, you didn't want to record this episode. Uh, um, black guy in his 30s, and he's like, he's got his windows down. So he sort of, I'm walking, and in, in the roundabout coincides with how he's driving my, my way. So he pulls up, he goes, hey, man. And I look up, and like, I mean, I'm talking about sheets of tears yeah. like coming down his face. And I was like, what's up, man? He goes, I need you to call a park ranger. I don't want to be alive anymore, which I'm the best and worst person to be suicidal around because I immediately was like, in my head, I go, what's a park ranger going to do to talk you down? From-? He's like, move along. I was like, no I, red ring included I, bodies. I was like, do I? <laughs> I was like, do I, I don't, who has the park ranger's number off the top of their head? I don't have it like, so that I, I. Did you have to Google park ranger? I mean, I just did, you know, like I get, calm in situations like that so i like just walked up i go hey man i was like put your car in park and let's like let's just talk like two dudes right i was like just take like a breath like let's so then you know and then you guys jacked off together yeah yeah, i was like you know feel better now don't you we made out and then he went ah that's gay (laughs) jack it's two dudes just jacking off together not touching each other just jacking off then he wanted to kill himself even more after Mm -hmm. that but he uh I like thought maybe he had a gun in his lap, but he just had like a broken ass phone and stuff. So mm. I was like, um, "Oh, dude, I've cracked my screen and probably killing myself too." So I yeah, get dude. it, man. Yeah, it's some... I get it. <laughs> yeah, it's like so. Like I'm trying to siphon whatever other comedy there is out of it. So like I mentioned, the guy's black because at this point, I'm not from the streets, mm-hmm. but I'm like in my head, I go, "Okay, I'm clearly gonna have to call someone professional to help this guy." Yeah, but is it snitching because it's a black guy? And I don't want to get him in more trouble. Right. Which is the stupidest <laughs> possible thought. There's not a thought. I mean, anyone in the in a maybe that's diet. why he wanted you to call the park ranger because they'd be like, "There's a black man. What's that in his phone? A hand. It's a gun." And they shoot him, and, and he gets unalive. Then that's what he wanted, and that's what he he was doing suicide by cop. What's but what's a dude with an Arby's hat gonna do to help you? Like you got me. Like I'm I, I I'm you know I'm talking with you and stuff. So no, I'm, but I'm saying like he, his plan was to get. No, he didn't. I know. I understand the logic yeah. where, like, maybe he didn't want the cops to get yeah. called. Unfortunately, there's not like a three digit number everyone remembers to call Ranger Rick to yeah. come bounding out of the bushes to help you in your time of need. Yeah. And then, of course, like sure days later, take that long to look up Metro Parks Rangers. You no. don't want to start looking at your phone. You know what I mean? Like, it's no, like, it just didn't like, seem like a situation to look at your phone. You want, where are we going to find the Park Rangers number? Mark Metro Park Rangers. So long story short, phone number. Um, oh. he like calmed down like for a second, a little bit, and then he ran back up and he like took off. Didn't like, take that long. could have yeah. saved his life. What was his number? What's the number? Oh, so everybody can lock it in. So now nobody has an excuse. If you listen to Cleveland America, 440 358 7290. And remember, only you can prevent suicide. That's actually makes way more sense than the forest fire. Probably stand a way better chance of helping one person to kill himself than a whole ass forest. Well, I mean, like, I can literally prevent myself from committing suicide. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. I'm the only person that can stop me. That's some real profound <laughs> shit, man. Like, Dude, you know what I said today? That's like thousands of dollars of therapy in one sentence there. Well, while we're on it, on Bill saying profound shit, I said this, uh, my, my girlfriend and I went out. Today, uh, had breakfast, one washed my car, they were driving back to my place, and we were talking about mental health issues, and I just said, why isn't greed 
classified as a mental health issue because it's one of the biggest problems facing humanity. Because it also is capitalism. Right. But I mean, I mean, I know why it's not, but like it is. It's a very, that's also a very profound it's a very thought. Profound a good question. Talk. <laughs> it's also like we used to celebrate Michael Jordan for being the most ruthlessly competitive person, but now we look at him like kind of like he was a sociopath. Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, I don't think we look at Michael there's Jordan. There's a lot of people that romanticize that. Sure. But I'm saying like in the 90s, everyone looked at him as the greatest athlete that ever lived because of his competitive right. spirit. Yeah. And, yeah. and and now knowing what we know about mental health, a lot of people are kind of like, oh, it's kind of, dude, was kind of not right. Well, yeah, uh, it's, it's extreme narcissism. And yeah, like it's, uh, it's, it's I think it's sociopathy even more than, nar- ooh, not to, yeah. I don't, I don't know. How's that for some syllables? Um, sociopathy. Sociopath, baby. Okay, all right, yeah, there you go. I don't even know if that's a word, but it sounds sick as hell. Literally, I sociopathy at the Agora. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! So back to that'd be so, a good festival. Back to back to Edgewater suicide guy. Oh yeah. Um, to wrap it up, he like, so he was like, he like said, "I'm gonna pull my car up here a little bit because he's kind of like in the middle of the road still," and then he just puts his car in gear and he just rips up back on the shore when mm-hmm. takes off. And I was like, I did the hey don't mm-hmm. no I don't know what to do now, but I got um. Mm-hmm. I got his license plate number and I snitched on him to not kill himself. So hopefully he didn't. Don't call me a hero. Yeah. Um, especially if things didn't work out, which I hope they did, because that was not the way I wanted to start my day. Yeah. So like especially if you're going out for a walk for your own mental health and then you're like, hey man, your suicide crying's really bumming out my feeling good time walk. I go, I go, do we have to do this like right now? <laughs> my guy. And then, no, I was taking a walk. I'm like, dude, hey, hey, have, did, did you think about getting out of the car and going for a walk? Uh, to help, like, this is, I, you're I've, crying in the car. Get out of the car and go for a walk. I've gotten, yeah, like, it was, it was a yeah. nice day, too. I've gotten a lot of cries out when I go on walks and stuff. Like, like, and I'm not suggesting for a second I knew for a second what that dude was going through. Probably nothing big. <laughs> you know, they probably <laughs> fucked up his Starbucks order yeah, or something, but, like. Um, it also, like, I just go, he might have done something really not great. Yeah. I hope, I don't know. And, don't know. And, and I hope he got the help he needed, but I just don't know. So I did what any, uh, and also I was, <laughs> I was out going for a walk because I was going to the doctor to get an STD test. How'd that turn out? So I'm clean. Yay. Clean. Clean. No suicide. <clears throat> no suicide for pants. No, you did not quit dick suicide. <laughs> not yet. Uh, Maybe yeah. I'll be the one in the Ford Escape next mm. time. But um, yeah, that one that one kind of gave me some perspective where I'm like, no matter what happens here, shit ain't so bad. Yeah. But yeah, no, you get out, take, enjoy the fresh air, take some breaths, stare at the water a little bit, and don't commit suicide is what I think the big takeaway from today should be. And I'm STD free. And pants is STD free. Ladies. I am, I am too. Uh, I just didn't get a test this week. You just know it in your heart. Mm-hmm. He just knows it in his heart. He's he's clean. I just, did, I just rub my hand on it and go, that's clean. <laughs> Yeah. You went. You went to YouTube Medical School. Yeah, yeah, that works. But um, I, uh, I, uh, <laughs> so, so I was at a wedding yesterday, and uh, when we were waiting for dinner, everybody's getting a little antsy because we were like one of the later tables to get dismissed to go get our food, Ugh. and uh, we were all just talking, and we noticed the centerpieces had a bunch of jars on it, and. You know, it's the people get married are in their early 30s and they're working in the music industry. So a lot of people there talked about smoking weed and were on weed. And well, this is on 420 as as well. Yes, yeah, so they got married on 420. So uh, uh, my girlfriend picks up one of the jars and she and someone's like, oh, you can put your stash in that. I'm like. No, nah, she probably just put like little rocks because she's a little retarded. <laughs> and the laugh that I got at that table was one of my favorite laughs I've gotten this year. <laughs> Do these people know you? 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. But like, they still weren't ready for that because I don't bring out that word very often. But I know when I do, I'm gonna use it in like the mm-hmm. best, funniest way. You really got to pick your spot. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. that's the thing. It's like, and when people are just like, like Jimmy Carr's got a new comedy special out where he's like. I can joke about anything. It's like, then just do it. Because as soon as you say, oh, they don't want me to joke about this, and you make a joke about it, that's a fucking cop-out to me. Just make the jokes. Yeah, disclaimers on any jokes always is kind of like an out for it to not go well. Well, Um, even like, it, it, but it just, it's this narrative that's just very lame when it could be like just do the jokes and don't mention whether or not you're supposed to say it people know what you're supposed to say and what you're not supposed to say i think like in a trigger society like yeah that's kind of like right but now it's a hacky fucking thing to do if you're just going up there and like oh i'm not supposed to talk about this but i'm gonna talk about it fucking hack you're a fucking hack if you say that shit even though i think i say something well here's the thing i in my new special i say uh the w word <laughs> i say wigger and <laughs> i like how to do with the n one what you just did <laughs> uh but i say it and i go i kind of sure like probably not supposed to say that word but like it's it's after i've already said it like it's it's a whatever uh but it's also like it's not this diatribe i'm like Oh, I'm gonna get canceled. I'm just like, ah, eh. you just kind of throw it you out. Gotta, like, you're, I just, number one, you're on stage. Yeah. Which I, I'm not saying you're consequence free for whatever you say on stage, but what I am saying is you're in an environment where risks are going to be taken. Yeah. So. So I and but I think it's less risky when you do the whole. I'm not supposed to talk about this. Well, no, it's the equivalent of like if I go up and I go, I don't know if this joke's gonna be good or not, but here goes. Like, right. It's that's the no, dude. You gotta jump or no. What's the what's the like music equivalent? of <laughs> limp biscuit made a whole career out of doing that shit where yeah. they like they're like this is shitty unless you don't think it is and that was like the tone of yeah all their first few albums and shit and and i had to watch them live like fucking nine times in the 90s and i just hated it <laughs> where they they i should as a pro wrestling fan celebrate their approach but i fucking hated it yeah so anyways but um so the R word, yeah. I yeah. That girl, that it, it would be. I just thought it was, it was awesome. I just she laughed so hard too. <laughs> yeah, well, that's even like, more, like you weren't she, sleeping on the couch. No, like she that. she was so like because it it just it, timing's everything, and it, mm-hmm. I, I just got. I and then I was I was I'm seeing part of the wedding too, and I got a few good. uh <laughs> Like there's a lot. Oh, that's right. I forgot yeah, you were you were. There's like a few kids there, like running around on the stage, and. uh when I was getting ready to introduce the dances, I was like, hey, we're going to do the dances right now. But before that, I just want to let you all know that the over under on a child falling off the stage is one and a half. Get your bets in over at the bar. And like, <laughs> How many people would you say were at this wedding? Probably uh, 150. Oh, nice. It was, pretty, it was pretty good size. That's a, that's a good that's a good draw. That's a good pops. And then, uh, you know, the, you know, how the brides will like do like their wedding dress and then they'll have like their after the wedding dress, like the. They'll, they'll like chain so she had a second dress on and she's like really into that like late 60s there's a wardrobe change from, in yeah. this thing for, for the for the bride not okay. for anybody else the bride she had three dresses the husband just stayed in his same suit yeah. game gear yeah okay. yeah uh and it was like you know it's like this big flowy like triangle of a dress and uh i was you know invited her out just to get some woos and cheers and everything. And I, and so she's like, everybody's like, oh, you're so beautiful and cheered for her. And I'm like, yeah, nobody's ever made a coffee filter look that beautiful before. <laughs> <laughs> Just roasting. Just roasting. Yeah. And she's like, all right, you're cut off. I'm like, you should have paid me. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was good laughs and it was a good time. And uh, uh, it like made me, I'm like, oh, man, why aren't we celebrating our friends like this all the time like oh yeah because everybody gets divorced so we should like, just start yeah. doing divorces the way we do weddings, weddings yeah because to be honest way more fun they're generally pretty happier affairs than the weddings yeah you know for the most part uh greg proof and a lot of a lot of guys need the money more at that time that is really <laughs> like you don't need yeah you don't need the fucking starter package and, and pots and pans when you're starting a life together with someone that has an, an income also yeah you need it when you're getting fucking gang raped by lawyers mm-hmm. at the end of the ride 
We should really we should right. talk to Elk and Elk or something like fucking. Just let us know. No, fuck Elk and Elk. We no, we're, just we're, we're divorce party planners. Divorce party. starting today. Yeah. And you know what's a good place to have one? Old 86. <laughs> we got room. We got a patio. Yeah. We'll do a balloon arch for you, like whatever you want. We got some big titty goth girls to walk by you there. I can talk to you. I mean, they'll walk by you. They're here regardless, but yeah, yeah we can get more. Yeah. If, that's, if that would help. Man, yeah, I'm getting married again, so I get divorced again. That's the best fucking idea. That's the only reason I would ever get married again. Um, just for that good ass divorce party. I didn't have. I mean, I didn't. I certainly did not have one when I got divorced. No, I. I would argue that I had next. A, I had a good summer. <laughs> a real good. Summer. I didn't. I had a very long winter. Is mm. what I had. Um, but I would argue the let's see, ten years that that followed it uh, kind of have been like a party, so to speak. That's good. Greg Proops was at my wedding. That's crazy. Well, he didn't, he wasn't invited. We got married like at a hotel and he just, I I saw him descending the stairs of this hotel. Oh, that's sweet. And I just go, oh, Greg Proops is technically at my wedding. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That's very cool. We didn't talk or anything. I don't think he, he didn't know he was in a wedding. Did you do it at the arcade? Yeah. Yeah. Downtown. Yep. That's, uh. We um, he was probably working at Larry's and just walking over to Larry's. It was, I was, um, well, I mean, it was late. I think it was, he probably, I think I met him that week. What year was it? Oh, 2011. I, yeah, I probably, because, uh, when did I, uh, I can't look that up. I can't just go on my phone and be like, when did I meet Greg Proops? Yeah. Was... But like, I, I've known him for a minute, and uh, we've hung out, out, like, in different cities when we're in the same city. He could have just come team. taking advantage of an open bar, too. I, maybe he did. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. He probably did. Yeah. I would have put it past him. Uh, back in those days, he was still was he drinking? drinking? Yeah, yeah, I don't, He's I not don't anymore. But he he was then. I don't really know anything about Greg Proops beyond the fact that as a child, for some reason, he was impressed upon me on TV, like the half hour comedy hour type guy. Yeah, that and uh, um, what's the whose line is it anyway? Would he's also one of those guys that's American, but he doesn't seem like it. he doesn't have an accent. He doesn't, but there's just something about him that seems British. He uh, he's got like a scientist slash magician vibe about yeah. him too. But yeah, he's he, like he's like was he an '80s guy or a '90s guy? '90s, yeah, '90s New York guy. Uh, I think he's more San Francisco is where he really came. That up. makes sense. Yeah, that that yep, that checks that box. So he's a very uh, very funny dude, and but he's also got like. He's got like a little bit more of a hipster Frasier ness to him, where he's like well spoken yep. and he's, he's yep. got great vocabulary, really smart, uh, and definitely a, a bit uh, what, what can I ever cerebral, remember? not cerebral, but condescending, maybe a little condescending, okay. not not like Bill Maher levels or Dennis Miller levels. No, I get you. it's there's a there's can, a. Can we yeah. talk about how Dennis Miller used to be fucking hilarious? Well, I never thought he was. I mean, but I also don't know a ton of. But I know this is how people, are, bad people, are making TV. Uh, they throw so many things out there that obviously aren't going to work. And at one point, for Monday Night Football, <laughs> Dennis okay. Miller, yep, was who they hired to do color commentary. And I guess the idea was, hey, we're going to pair a comedian. With the play by play, play by play guy and the color football guy. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so Al Michaels, right? Who was it all? I think it was Al Michaels, Dennis Miller, and maybe not Mike Tirico at the time. Maybe Chris Collinsworth. This is Miller Monday Night Football. Monday Night Football. Um, I want to say there was definitely two guys, and one was Al Michaels because Al Michaels did it forever, and then Dennis Miller kind of got crowbarred in the middle yeah. of the two of them to provide those <laughs> those angular, cerebral, and, and met, uh, metaphors no one All ever right. followed or understood. Man, we're going, we're digging deep no, right this now. Let's go Reddit. Yeah. Okay. And if you're under the age of thirty, uh, Dennis Miller was like the host of the Weekend Update in the eighties. Yeah, late eighties and nineties. Uh, he never did sketches. He just did mon- the weekend update, and he only ever did metaphors that literally you would have to spend twenty minutes of Wikipedia yeah. to follow. I can't see who was on with, but it, it was probably Madden and Pat Summerall because those were the. That's right. Main guys. Just, okay, so but, but, so Dennis Miller, but Dennis Miller, like he's not a blue collar, salted. Like you think of Jeff Foxworthy, 
somebody like that, Tim Allen, Rodney Dangerfield, yeah, and the younger. I mean, this Rodney is the year two thousand, so yeah. like they should have known better by now. But but getting Dennis Miller to do it, and he's trying to make Beowulf jokes and like <laughs> be the smartest person in the room. It's just the most. Dog shit it's idea. Like ever Randall heard Cunningham of. down there looking like Marie Antoinette just passed around six hydrochloric acid. But you know, yeah, just yeah, like yeah, just throwing like words out there just to like <laughs> start, like I know what these things mean. Do you? It's it a, sounded like a meta uh, Patton uh, Oswalt bit. Yeah. Like the whole thing just felt like Patton Oswalt rolled the whole bit because like the 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 references were so obtuse that if you were like a just a dude trying to drink a six or watching yeah. the game, you're probably like. Who the fuck is this gay wob with these yeah, red Right. It's like, it just... I'm, yeah, just Hank Hill. That's who they should have got, is they should have just had... Uh, Jeff uh, Foxworthy, honestly, probably would have been perfect. Jeff Foxworthy would have been very good at it. Uh, honestly, Ron White would have been pretty good at it, too. You know, you know who? You know who, and, you know who, arguably, Dennis Miller was worse than? They had Rush Limbaugh on yeah, for, that, what, yeah. like a half season? Yeah. I don't think he made it a whole season. I don't think so, either. Because he said something, about, I think, about black quarterbacks or something. He, yeah. He inevitably said something that where they're like, oh, okay, this was a terrible yeah, idea. I can't do that. Um, but neither one... Look, I'm all for experimentation. Uh, it just was not a great but idea. But it just, like... Why Why Dennis Miller? And like, probably because someone had really, I think his agent had a relationship with someone, yeah. some executive, and they just were like out one night bullshitting and drinking. And there's like, why not? Like, and, and the thing is, I think that's what their plan was like, oh, we're going to raise the level of viewership here. And it's like, no, it's not. It's not that dumb people watch football. Lots of people that are smart and dumb watch football. It's a, it's very. It's a it's a big it's a of, wide swath of Americana. And when uh play by play commentators get into technical football stuff, there's a lot of people that are like, I can't follow this, but at least has something to do with what's going on. So I'm engaged with it. I'm gonna like try and learn from it. Where if you're just throwing out like Russian literature references to sound like you know what you're talking about. That's not being a good comedian to me. That's being just a shitbag that thinks they're smart. And well, I, but I, I, I've never, like, if if you don't know how to make the audience laugh that you're playing to, you are, you're, you're not, like, it, it's not dropping to their level. It's bringing them up to yours, but you can't bring them up to yours until you get down and find some common ground. I don't and, think, uh, but I also think, like, they literally... Better. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a I'm not a huge fan, certainly not these days, given how his politics have yeah. swung. Um I don't know about his politics. I just hate that. I think he was he used to be like shit. a shit. Like he used to be like a really liberal guy, right? And then he yeah. kind of became like a Republican yeah. over the years, which whatever. I'm just a separate never, conversation. I've never been a big fan of that uh smug, smug political yeah. um snarky commentary based yeah, like comedy. Bill Maher and Dennis Miller and all that shit. It just it, it's never been funny or interesting to me and even if they no, make, because you, you move you're while, not doing like, comedy yeah. anymore um, you be, you become yeah. like an essayist or you become like a just some sort of weird lecturer or but person. then there are the ones like like I think John Oliver and John Stewart do a tremendous job and doing that be without being that smug. I mean, you won't shut the fuck up about Tucker Carlson, so I feel like you should throw him in there too. Like, oh, you know, fuck that guy. His favorite, your favorite comedian. You, you always talk about. He's just. What can I say? I, I hate someone that's woke, and he's just so good. And <laughs> Tucker Carlson also like fuck uh, everybody that's platforming that guy right now. He's a piece of shit, and I know you guys got to uh, walk. Okay, this, this is edgy a great. Line. This is a great line of conversation you're entering here, but go on. But just f fuck you guys for. Being like, oh, what? We just want to talk to the guy. He's not doing anything wrong. Oh, he's just uh, turning all our parents into fucking white supremacists. You know who's Who platforming? Bro? You know who's platforming Tucker Carlson? Everyone that hates Tucker Carlson. Like it's the same reason Ben Shapiro and Andrew Tate don't have to have real jobs because. Yeah. It's like Howard Stern laid out this whole playbook in the '90s, where it's like, yeah, you have a fan base, but if, if your but your if you actual like audience people, yeah. is people that hate Ooh. watch you and follow you and hate share you, yeah, hate hate watching is definitely something that people can cash in on. And I'm I just I've never understood that. I'm like, why am I gonna watch something that makes me feel terrible? Because people don't know how to feel good, and there is like a lot of so initial. It's like 
I agree with you. I don't, I don't, I go out of my way to not veer down that road, but I can also tell you every once in a while, it's some nice junk food for the soul to just hate some shit. Yeah. But like, if I'm going to go down a like path of like hate and shit, I like, I, again, I don't like that. I'd rather be more intrigued and in like, what the hell's going on here kind of thing. It's like, you know, murder documentaries and stuff like that. But I also just, I'm, I'm such a like, I'm going to keep my head in a good headspace type of person. Yeah. Like, you know, the Taylor Swift's new thing came out this week. And obviously there's a lot of people that are dunking on her being, you know, which is impossible. You can't really dunk on her. You can try and dunk on her. She's fucking a billionaire and she's like 33 years old. No, but there are people, I think, I think that, I don't think the other shoe is ever going to drop on Taylor Swift, but I think people are exhausted of Taylor Swift um, worship is I think where you're going with Well, and, and, and Well, what I'm saying is, I, I we live in a day and age where if you don't want to participate in that stuff, it's really easy to not. And so, yeah, when everybody is sharing the new songs and they're like, oh, this this is this one spoke to me and let, let them. Also, ladies, remember, you couldn't relate to these songs so much without shitbag boyfriends like me and pants here. Uh, if, if we weren't breaking your hearts and disappointing you, then you'd hear these Taylor Swift songs and be like, I don't relate to this. It is, it is the, the internet will, if you spend too much time on it and you're not mindful, you do begin to believe you have to weigh in culturally on right, every yeah. single fucking thing. I went you to can quietly Swift... just not participate in any of it. I like... went to a Taylor Swift release party because uh, my daughter threw one. Oh, okay. And she, like I was at Fun House. And she usually hangs out there. So I'm like, hey, are you at Fun House? Are you planning on coming to Fun House tonight? And she's like, nah. Was this recently? It was like the most Thursday. Okay. At High and Dry. After High and Dry, I went to Fun House. And then I was like, hey, you should come hang out. And she's like, actually, I'm at my friend's house down the street. We're having a Taylor Swift party. Why don't you come over and hang out here? And I went. And it was her and her boyfriend and a couple of her other friends. And it was like there. Like we did some blind karaoke, which is, you ever done that? They just turn out a song and you have to guess the lyrics. <laughs> I had to do that on stage of, of last month, but that's a different story. Yeah, but yes, but it, was, familiar. it was very fun. Uh, we did that. And then uh, they had like a good spread. And this is like a kind of a cute moment for me as a dad is my daughter now makes the dip that she learned to make from her mom. That she, her mom learned to make from my mom. And so it's like passed down through generations. And you guys like, have generational dips. Uh, it's a, well, it's just like the pumpernickel bread bowl with the uh, spinach dip. Spinach dip. But like, I know that's not like the, like a signature thing, but it is for no, our it, family. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I know it's a very basic. Thing. You might come from the only whiter family than the one that I'm descended from. Dude, dude, it's, it's so good though. <laughs> no, dude, I, I was raised on that too, but that's certainly. Uh, and I'm not shitting but on they that. Did it away with like. Put water chestnuts in it. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah man. Fucking good shit. That was but that was, was like, every you know, fucking holiday, man. It's a it's, like clockwork. And like for this to be included as a holiday, is this party yeah. for her, and yeah. she made it. And I was like, oh fuck yeah, I love this dip. And uh, what other snacks are we talking about? What's the spread uh, like? What's uh, the spread that, looking like here? That, that was, it was a good spread, honestly. There was um, uh, what's the with the mozzarella and the mozzarella, uh, like the the fresh, like the buffalo, yeah, the burrata, type. yeah, and, and the oh, oh, and the, the crostini, yeah, like a, it's bread and then cheese and a little bit of like oil. basil, yeah, basil. Yeah, 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 it's like a, a I know we we, we all yeah, we, the, the caprese, yeah. Thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's that. Uh, uh, there was just some like chips and dips and stuff like that. There was uh, uh, some charcutes. Uh, it was a good time. It was oh, a th- good... Thanks for the invite. And, and then uh, uh, you you were dead, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> and then once like they're they're all like making their predictions. They had like Taylor Swift bingo boards, so even they know it's kind of like we can we can expect her to sing about certain things. I was like, what is like the Taylor dies at the end? And now, like, it's like, it's like, uh, she's going to mention Matt Healy. She's going to have like, uh, like whatever. Uh, the Taylor the Swift Taylor cinematic Swift, universe yeah, is yeah. one I'm not familiar with. Uh, and then like, everybody's making, they're like, how many times do you think she's going to say the F word? I'm like, how many, guys, how many times do you think she's going to say the N word? And they're like, all right, you got to go in the other room now. I'm like, I will. <laughs> Cause I'm not going to like fuck up. In, like they were talking about the, the double G. No, no, no double G. No, fuck. 
Oh. No, they, they think she's like... Oh. <laughs> she's going to say it and say, I know, right, but that's... I was about to say, this like, sounds like a like, wild album. Hey, Taylor, yeah, she's, she's just... Just out here. <laughs> and, and gotta get out of my face. <laughs> Conservatives are raving about Taylor Swift's brand new album. <laughs> she didn't hold back. Not woke at all. We She's love just a saying, finally saying what we're all thinking out there. <laughs> you, uh, I was AI is going to have a field day with that one. If you thought the pictures were bad, yeah, right. Someone out there that's and it's not going to be me. But yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. If you are good at AI, make Taylor Swift say the N word and the F double G word. <laughs> Jeez. No, but like oh, I don't like... we miss Tommy. <sighs> Speak for yourself. I mean, I I I love you, Tommy. I miss you too. We miss you. I have a I have a whole bunch of memes I'm waiting to shower you with when you return mm -hmm. from getting your gaba gould, so to speak. We were supposed to have other guests this week. Yeah, that's just kind of the the running joke now is just like the weekly cancelers. Yeah, it's just. Do you want to? You don't want to mention. No, well. Uh, I don't want to throw anybody on front street about it. No, it's the garage bar uh, GM, and she's going to bring one of the bartenders with her. Not just, to be confused but like, with the West 25th Street garage bar. Yeah, this is a Willoughby one, which I'll be at next week, but when this comes out, it'll, that show will already be over, because I keep forgetting to plug it. Uh, but it will it went great, I'm sure. Uh, anyway. Anyways, when you, whenever you guys want to come down and, and and help us make a show of it, you know, great, we're here. <laughs> when when she you. said that in the group chat, I was like, "Yeah, what is? Let's can we dissect this real quick? Yeah. What, is she, what was she meaning by that? Was she offering up her boobs to NSA? You think? Well, or was she offering them to us? I think she was offering them to Ricky for the weed. Oh, but then and that's that I'm like, I have more. weed. <laughs> yeah, that may, okay. Now it makes yeah, sense. Yeah, there. Well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I guess. Maybe I should, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I, I will not, I won't go into the context of that whole thread, which isn't thrilling listening right now, I'm, I'm sure. Out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. Uh, um, but I don't, people, there's a lot of, people are just sad, and people are just mad yeah. in, in if you but spend I don't like, no, too much that's time on the, in, on the internet, like you're the only thing that gets you off is fucking raving and ranting and raging on I about know, stuff I you just, don't like. I like, I like feeling good. I like, I do too. That's why I look at so much porn. I like, yeah. But then it's here. Here's a new one that I watched this week. Yeah, I'm gonna say this for when Tommy's here. Okay. Uh, it does get kind of sad when just two dudes talking about porn and yeah. no women around. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think we're not. You know, I think we've actually talked about it before. But anyway, it, 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 I just like it showed up in my feed again, and I was like, I love this. And it's basically a girl just watching porn and commenting on it as she oh, watches, masturbates. And I'm, oh, she's and, masturbating while yeah. she's watching. Oh, I thought it was like she was like comedically breaking. No, something. no, she's that would kind of be funny. Yeah, I think, yeah, you know. But yeah, if she's just jacking off along with it, like I guess that's, hot. that's cool. Yeah. yeah, is she hot? Yeah, yeah, she's real hot. Okay, just send me the link after the show. Um, what else? What else? Let's talk about something about Cleveland. Oh, the Cavs, <laughs> the Cavs are doing the playoffs, and the Guardians are good. The Cavs are doing the playoffs, and uh, so that's all up like, one nothing. The yeah. Cavs are and again. This comes out next week, so it's irrelevant to talk about anything current. Uh, um, okay, all right. Let's talk about. But let's talk about top moment going to a sporting event. Oh, I've got a lifetime. I've got a lot. And okay. I, okay. Go, go, go. I will start with start with a good one. The one I actually saw live, I would have to say, would be Stipe Miocic retaining his title against Alistair Overeem in 2016. That was a great that was year. The first that time. was a great time. Yep, that was the first time UFC had been to Cleveland. Mm -hmm. It was a crazy fight. Yeah, I won't. I won't go into the blow by blow, but he basically like it was like it looked like back. he wasn't going to win. He got it, sat down. Yeah. He he ate a shot. He got sat yeah. down. Somehow reversed it yeah. and submitted. I know he he pounded out, grounded and pounded Overeem. Yeah, who Overeem is objectively the most impressively built man you'll ever see in your entire life. Yeah, at the height of his career. Anyways, because later that year I got to go to the watch party to see Game Seven to see the Cavs win the title. I was at that too. Which is not to say they weren't actually in the building, but it still was an incredible, moment. surreal. Yeah, surreal. But I have to say, yeah. if I actually saw it in in Her the flesh. 
it has to be that. It's the number one of yeah. all time. If you see it, well, I mean, it still tops my list. Just watching it with everybody at the queue and the whole just, everything that followed yeah. was was probably the most unreal sports well, night of my life. It's just 2016 it seems like such a ridiculous year, especially for Cleveland because you get Cavs win the championship, you get Stipe doing what he's doing. You have the Indy that the guard, yeah, the Indians World Series. Go World Series losing seven games. And the Republican National Convention, where Trump is put in as the Republican nominee, like, and in the end, won yet. So, like, it was it was just a weird. That like, all that happened was, in that, the span of a summer. That yeah. didn't even happen in the span of yeah, a year. That was that was all in the summer. summer. That was a, that was an insane summer. Yeah, that was that was you know not knowing COVID would yeah. become a thing. That was probably the wildest like summer year of my life. You know. All right, here's one of my best moments. Uh, Cavs game as well, and it was. Uh, I was on. I had just moved out of my parents' house, and I got uh, an apartment in Tremont that I had to pay two hundred and thirty dollars a month. I think about this price all the time. It's by the way, so yeah. crazy, and I mean it was a teeny little efficiency apartment, but two hundred thirty dollars a month. Hey, you'll find that on your couch cushions. So on good, a bad month. I know, right? <laughs> and. Uh, I was on my way to go to church. I was like, I'm going to try and keep being a church guy, even though I was really just lying to myself. Mm -hmm. And on my way, I had some cash in my pocket from a gig the night before, and I saw a guy selling a ticket for the Cavs game on the street, and it was like 40 bucks, and I'm like, sold. Bought a ticket. The ticket didn't even scan, but they still let me in. <laughs> This, this is 2003? Guy. This is 2007. Okay. So the yeah, year the like, Cavs went yeah. to the finals. Is it that year? Yeah. 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 2006, 2007, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think that's the year I moved into that. That's when LeBron... It might have been 2006, honestly. LeBron dragged that whole yeah. team that had no business even no. making the play. It was 2006. I'm sorry. I'm it was 2006. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so it was 2006, and... When, uh, like, I, I go in there and I sit, it's like pretty decent seat. It's in like that kind of corner, but it's the lower bowl still. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting next to Sean Marion's family. Oh, God. Yeah. He was on the, the we played the Suns. Mm -hmm. We won, I think, by like one or two points. It was a fucking blast. Uh, it was, it was the best day. And I was just there by myself, and I was like in a suit and tie, not even a suit, but like yeah. I didn't like I dressed to go to church, and I'm just like going crazy. Was this crazy. a playoff game or was no? It's it just like a, it was like a just January a game. 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 It, was yeah. like, it was a just a day game in January, like a one o'clock game. I think it was on ESPN though, or ABC. And then that was the year. That was the first year that they went to the playoffs. And I went to that first playoff game that LeBron ever had against the Wizards, and he had a triple double. And that was incredible. I've seen, I was at the game. I had literally, I was second row on the corner of, on the floor when he hit that buzzer beater against the Magic in the playoffs. Oh, bro. That's so insane. not knowing yeah. there would ever be a Stipe Miocic yeah. or the Cavs would yeah. ever actually win, that was the wildest shit I've ever seen in yeah, person. Yeah, just to be there in person, that's, that's yeah. incredible. Uh, it was, uh, um, that that was i mean that's a thing in our lifetime that i tried to like not take for granted is i saw lebron play live i want to say a dozen or so times yeah and every time i saw it i go remember this fucking this, game yeah, this and remember because this is not going we're not this gonna be something yet, you're gonna yet, talk yet, about yeah. for the rest of your life uh a brown's moment for me was <laughs> 2000 oh, i think it was seven Charlie Fry was the starter. He got injured, and they or he just got benched, and they brought in Derek Anderson. And I we were playing oh wait, Anderson. this is two thousand seven. Yeah. Okay, so it's like yeah. the one season they actually were good. Well, this is for like, like ever. This is the one that led to the one they were good. This is like towards the end of the season, but like Derek Anderson took over for Charlie Fry, mm -hmm. and then that following season we won ten games. Yeah, but this was at the end of that. No, the 2007 season we went ten and six, and we missed the playoffs only because okay that the division and the conference was that good. Okay, well, maybe because was, we replaced maybe that's 2006. Then. Yeah, I'm not trying to get deep into the no, weeds. No, no, so no. what happened at the game? So it, that made it so. So it was uh, 
Derek Anderson co- goes in for Charlie Fry, and nobody really knew anything about Derek Anderson at this point because, like, it was like he he hadn't played a game yet, and he comes in and he had this one run, which he was not known for being a fast guy. He was six he, foot six, like he was yeah, he was painfully yeah. tall even for a football player, and he was he he had this like one like thirty yard run that set up a touchdown, and then we went to overtime. I don't know if that that might have been in overtime, but the point was it was just an overtime game that we won, and I was at the game with my buddy Matt Bergman, who's from Buffalo, and this other comedian that I don't remember his name, but he's from Texas, and he wasn't a football guy, but he came to the game with us because he's just like, yeah, I got nothing else to do, and he was so like pumped up by this game that he's like, I'm a Browns fan now for the rest of my life, and I was like, hell yeah, and then as we're walking down out of the game he's just like trying to get everybody a chance he's like who loves the browns who loves the browns i love the browns and we weren't even drinking that much or anything like he was just like so like enveloped in browns fandom and and how special that game was there's also a guy that brought so much so many hamburgers in a cooler at that time and he was just like pulling out cold hamburgers and just handing them to everybody around we're like he's paying $45 $45 for a hamburger, the, so let's do it. The only thing that comes close to, if I didn't go to so many hardcore shows in my 20s and 30s, I nothing comes close to the amount of fist fights and violence I've seen than at Browns games when they were bad. Yeah. Like from even before they yeah. left town the first time, yeah. just just hey, the I, amount of roofers I just watched just beat the shit out of each other. I, see, I only went to preseason games when I was a kid because we wouldn't go to Sunday games because my dad, first of all, didn't even like football. And then, like, he would just take us when we get preseason game tickets because they, you know, everybody just give them away anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I know I have a lot of like Browns memories at games when I was a kid, but I went pretty regularly all through my like, you know, all through the years. I mean, I saw my first, the first adult fist fight I ever saw in my life. I was eight years old at a Browns game in Municipal Stadium. Yeah, it was like it was one of the coolest. It, it was one of the coolest experiences of my life because it was with my dad. And my dad had seen some shit in his life. Mm-hmm. And everyone at the Browns game in 1988 was just red, beat, beat red faced mm-hmm. and just on the verge of blacking out for four straight four. It was a fo- Monday night football game mm-hmm. and everyone had been drinking since lunchtime that day. Yeah. So my dad had been paying attention to what was going on like a couple rows behind us. There was like one Bengals fan in an entire section of just angry Browns fans mm-hmm. who were all probably average age of 35 they all worked manual labor jobs and they were all angry. So my dad leans in and he goes, when I tell you to turn around to see what I'm about to show you, I want you to do that and then we're leaving. And I go, okay. And I was like, <laughs> I looked like Roger Ebert, but eight years old. Like I it was the softest kid you've ever seen in your life. How my dad raised, like yeah. gave birth to me makes no sense because my dad yeah. was a badass. Yeah. So he goes, you ready? And I go, yeah. He goes, okay, now. And I remember him kind of just taking me and turning my whole body. <laughs> I turn around and I just see like the biggest arm and the biggest fist just cross the dude and just sleeps this guy. And then I just feel my dad's like like a lion cub grab the back of my shirt and let's go. I don't even remember hitting the floor between our seats and leaving the stadium. I love like that my dad just grabbed. I love that he's like, I want you to see this. Yeah. And I'm going to get you to safety, but I, you, you need to see this. I'd been like, because I'd been throwing fits for years, yeah. because that was when the Browns were super good. Yeah, yeah, like the mid-80s, yeah. the Browns were Browns like awesome. contenders yeah. every season. Yeah. So like, and like my, like that, like, you know, that was around when I really started to watch the Browns and I loved the Browns. And what like, were you my probably dad, like eight or nine of that? At that point, I was like eight. Yeah. And when I was like five or six, I was like, beg him to take yeah. me. And he just goes, you'll understand one day. Why you can't come? Yeah, and because he would take me to tons of Indians games because right. that was like a family environment. Yeah, and it just was they always sucked and tickets yeah. were always super cheap. Da da da. So like he just goes, you don't understand the things. It's not a place for a child, Aaron. So then finally he took me, and I was scared out of my mind. And then I just saw like grown men beating the shit out of each other. I go, I was like, I get it. I'm good. And then he took me to. He would take me to the bathrooms to because you had to piss, yeah. right? And that's when they had the, the long troughs, piss yeah. troughs. And I'd be. He goes. He would again grab me by the back of my neck, mm-hmm. and he go, 
Just look forward. Yeah. Don't, don't touch yeah, anything. Don't touch anything. Don't look at anything. So then, inevitably, like, he just put puts me between, like, two dudes. Yeah. And I was basically like, here's me. Here's a dick. Yeah. Here's another dick. And then I was like, I'm going to go, so I could be that big one? It's, <laughs> it's crazy. And it's like, yeah, no, chill. No one under the age of 25 should be allowed to ever go to a Browns game before, like, the age of social media. Yeah, it was. Ever. Because even, like, the pregame stuff, I like, or, like, the preseason stuff, it was still everybody black out. Like, I don't have great it's almost, good, but it's, yeah, just, I just remember being on the RTA. <laughs> we, we took the rapid down and just, you know, guys, like, there was a guy that was making fun of a black guy that was on the train with us. Mm -hmm. And... Like nobody was stopping him. And yeah, that's, that like, unfortunately, sounds he's like he's like just pretty... keep him over there. And I was oh, just like, God. oh, geez, I didn't even understand what was going on until like I talked about that with my dad like years later, and he's like, oh yeah, he was uh, he was he he was being racist, and I was like, oh, that's, <laughs> that's racism, son. Yeah. That's that's. <laughs> I mean, you grew up in. I mean, I'm not going to talk. And it's not me talking shit on Medina, but were there a lot of black people out in Medina no, where you grew up? Not at all. No, I mean, where I grew up, there wasn't a lot of people. Like, I was. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds utopian, yeah, honestly. We were, we, were, we were in the woods. No one. It's yeah. just us. Yeah. I, I mean, right. yeah. All right. Uh, so, Guardians, I don't know. I've been to some playoff games and stuff like that, but I never, I didn't get to go to any of the World Series games, which is a bummer. But I don't like. I, I, Guardians yeah. games, I'm always like, or Guardians and Indians. I, I've been there for great moments. I can't remember them right now because that's the one that I probably do drink the heaviest at. It's a great. I mean, I, technically anything could be a great drinking event, but yeah. like Guardians games, when the weather's nice and yeah. it's a day game, it's the best it's so for like literally three and a half innings. Yeah, drink some White Claws, yep. get the fuck out. Yep. But like, I think I have mild PTSD because when I was a kid in the '80s, the Indians were awful every year and so my dad would get tickets because no one wanted to go mm -hmm. so he would take us and stuff because you know we didn't have a lot of money it was like a some a day out with the family whatever and uh they always played the brewers yeah. i saw the indians <laughs> play the brewers i swear to god i never saw in the 80s and maybe early 90s i never saw the indians play a different team besides the That's brewers hilarious. and they always lost <laughs> And we always stayed for all nine innings, and I'm not complaining about that. But I just remember at a young age ago, I think I have ADD or something, because yeah. I was like, this is taking a long time. And, well, and then when you uh, go to a game in the, I mean, like we went to some games in the night, and like that was such a treat to go when they were good in the nineties when they first moved to Jacobs Field. Yep, that was. They turned the switch on the whole yeah. thing. Like they moved into a new stadium. They were in the the World Series every year. Like they and they were. Uh, we, we sold out so many games. Like it was actually really set hard a record at the time to get tickets to go to game. Uh, there because it was they, they sold. Yeah, they said. I mean, they, like, they, they set, set a record. They don't. They might like, uh, might not have been broken. Yeah. To to this date, but right. um, I think it was, it was like, insane. It was like almost a decade of sellouts. Yeah, it was impressive. But they were also like. That was as exciting mm -hmm. and star-studded a team, I think, as we we ever, have, ever had. had. I think it was, I don't even think it's close. Yeah, I but uh, I'm just baseball's. Not, I've never been a baseball fan. I was never good at the sport. Right. Um, it just it's. I don't know. playing catch though. I got a baseball glove in a minute. Yeah, it's fun. But I also like. Yeah. <laughs> you want to go out in the middle of this Detroit Avenue and have a catch? Oh, go to fucking Edgewater or something. <laughs> I mean, I like. I don't like golf, but I like to you whack the ball there. around. Alley over it here. It is a perfect. Yeah. There's no windows. Yeah. Don't can't. Well, we have to put the gate back up. That's yeah. a different story. Yeah, um, yeah baseball was. Uh, this will surprise you. I just it wasn't a sport I was ever good at. Yeah. Unlike the other ones, which I excel at. You were so good at. Yeah. yeah. He could have gone pro, but he blew out his knee. Yeah, you know, it's just what could have been. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys for coming to Cleveland, America. It's not a serious place. Thanks, guys. See you next week.